Ciao, I'm Enzo. I'm Celia. This is a Piazza Talk, a channel about our life in Lucca. And in the Tuscan Hills. Please hit the subscribe button. Grazie. We don't particularly like going to the supermarket. And uh, so um, a lot of vegetables or, or greens, we try to forage from our own garden. Now, we're no experts and we only know what's on our land um, because we've been shown by a friend, a friend who, who's also uh, a chef. So um, if you want to do it yourselves, I suggest you get a friend who knows or um, you use apps and are careful because also plants, I think, uh, have different potencies in different parts of the world. Um, and um, on our land, it's very easy to, to find them because we have a sort of gardening concept of, um, it's quite rustic, our garden. I try to make it so that it, it blends into the landscape rather than being a garden imposed on the landscape. But that's just my personal choice. Also, because we're away uh, in the summer, because we let it out, it needs to be a garden that so looks it's, after itself. Yeah, kind of easy maintenance. <laughs> and I can just do a couple of hours a week. So... Um, oh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's probably the most beautiful garden I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Well, I also realise we have land because it, it's hard to uh, stop nature encroaching. So I <laughs> embraced it uh, and uh, quite pleased with the result. Now this is, we have a lot of dry stone walls and they're perfect places. This is what I call our fairy grotto, but it's actually uh, a, um, a fountain. The well is uh, ancient. We have a well at the top that collects rainwater and uh, I think that is uh, it's been here with, with the house for three, four centuries. And we also have an old washing well um, that we don't use to do the washing. <laughs> and the wall is, is full of uh, plants. So let's start gathering, shall we? You should start with the uh, cavoletti. Let's spot them. Where are the they? Cavoletti. Here, let me see. Here we are. Okay, there's some here. Now, it's also good not to take the roots of things no. because obviously we want them to grow next year. Uh, and uh, the cavalletti is the campion, uh, the blood the campion. Actually, we're going to make a soup, or Enzo's going to make a soup. Right Look, got more there. This is a family of the dandelion, the edible. Well, we cut everything the way we select the, the right ones when we are in the kitchen. So, um, this is good because you're actually cleaning your wall as well at the same time. <laughs> well, you want to keep the roots because you want the... You too want to yeah, keep the roots. They keep growing. <laughs> If you want a clean wall, this is one way of doing it. And of course, down below. Here, the bounds are held between uh, sweet and bitter. This is a good one. Your favorite. Hmm. I'll show you why I hate it so much. These are my um, roses. Um, I made a hedge and the uh, old man's beard entangles it. And every year I have to untangle it and I get scratched to death. So it's revenge. I can smell the chives. They're strong, aren't they? They're quite strong, yes. They're lovely. Uh, what have you got? Uh, a bit of sorrel. What have you found? Uh, what's it called? Grassa. 
Ah, I see it. Ingrassa Porci. Ingrassa Porci. Such a great name. Pig fattener. <laughs> quite, quite thick. Yes, it is quite, uh, um, what say, substantial. It it's is. good in soups, yes. It is. That's why right. um, in the past they used to feed the pigs with that. You have to admit, Enzo, this is better than going to the supermarket. This one here, get a few leaves of this. In England, they, if I'm right, they used to make tea when you dry them. Mm. And uh, they call the piantagine lanciola here. Some they call it English plantain, if I remember, but I'm not sure. A bit of rosemary. And that's all we need. Let's go down the bottom and get yeah. some more nettles. In the area where we um, uh, use as a compost heap and we burn stuff, the um, the wild mint grows, and though we don't need it today. Mm. Mm. It is quite strong, I can smell it. Oh, wonderful. The local ladies and um, Nicola are very good, our friend, uh, at doing this without um, stinging themselves, but I'm not such an expert, so I'm using the glove for most of it. Okay, I think that's enough. We can okay. go make the soup. Okay. The local recipe we're going to use includes uh, guanciale and borrotti beans. We got some uh, bolotti beans from the local shop, the Tuscan bolotti, and I soaked them overnight. And uh, I'm going to change the water a minute, and we go to cook them for an hour and a half. The beans, uh, bolotti, fagioli bolotti are ready, and I put uh, some water to boil uh, to give the herbs uh, uh, a plunge in hot water for a few minutes, in order to remove the potential. Uh, uh, irritants from the herbs and also uh, some of the bitterness that they can have so it makes the the soup pleasant Beautiful green colour, intense green. It is intense green. I know she smells really nice. Yes, uh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now we go to make a base, a sofrito for the um, for the soup. I got here a piece of uh, guanciale, but pancetta will do the same. Guanciale is the pork cheek. On low heat, I'm going to fry these onions and the guanciale. So the first thing I'm going to use some of the um, stock that I made with the, with the beans there when I was boiling the fagioli. I remove the two leaves, we don't need them anymore. I'm going to add the beans now. Now I'm going to add the, the herbs. If we call them herbs, what why would you call them? Because herbe. in Italian they say herbe selvatiche, but in English herbs is something else. Yeah, them. they're not really herbs, are they? Well, no. some of them are, I guess. Um, but uh, I don't know. But, you know, weed soup doesn't sound quite right. No, grass is not grass. No, um, I don't know. And I'm going to to put more of the stock that I got, and I will cover the herbs. The herbs. <laughs> wild plants. Okay. I don't know. Wild Maybe plants. somebody can help us. 
And now the final touch, I'm going to add uh, some fresh rosemary. I just put it on the top of the surface of the soup here. And uh, they got flowers, because the flowers are a bit more subtle than uh, the actual rosemary. And uh, now we bring it back to boil and it's going to cook for around uh, 15 minutes. It's about to be ready, so we want to season it. It's ready, so I'm going to remove the rosemary. And we can serve it now. Okay, I'll put a slice of uh, bread. Mm, better stale bread, if you have some bread left, uh, it's even better. And Our bread is uh, uh, homemade. And the bread is going to soak up part of the juice. You can serve the soup hot or cold. And a dash of olive oil. It, it seems appropriate to try it um, outside, if not in the garden. The sun's setting now, and um, it's going to be a lovely day again tomorrow. How is it? Let me know. It's delicious. The recipe is in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. It took us a lot of time to make. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to help us to be more visible, it's free.